A while ago, I made a video about the crash and the crisis in the caravan market. Now, a lot of people said that I was completely wrong and that prices weren't coming down and everything was fine. Well, it turns out I was right. Then this isn't a video as to say I was right because that's not the point of it. But the other day, Broadly and Leisure, who are a reasonable sized company to have several uh, dealerships or several sites, have put themselves in that administration. A little bit odd that they made an operating profit of £1 million on their accounts, 800,000 of actual profit, and then they've gone bust. But the market is really, really struggling. And it's actually nice that some dealers will actually be semi-open about this. So uh, one I talked to was uh, Austin Mowbray's Caravans over in Carlisle. to the video on his man, so I think maybe you could have a look at them. Uh, a lot of dealers pretend everything's perfect. And obviously they're going to because they don't want people to think that caravans aren't selling because then people are going to want to knock their prices down. But I know, talking to other dealers, that there are at least two or three of a reasonable sized dealers which are on the verge of bankruptcy and getting the administrators in. So you need to be really careful if you're buying a brand new caravan at the moment that you don't put a deposit down, like unfortunately some poor chap had on Broadlane, and then your caravan might not get delivered. Let's talk about what's going on. Well, obviously during COVID, everybody, well not everybody, but a lot of people bought a motorhome or a caravan. So the dealers had no caravans to sell or motorhomes to sell. This meant that they made a lot of money. Now, some of those dealers were quite wise and put that money to one side for a rainy day, like today. I'm actually on the 30th of July, this is my birthday, and it's lashing down outside. So the dealers put that money aside, partly because of tax bills. So the tax bills have become quite big, but also the fact that they knew that the market's not always perfect, that things happen. So some of them who've been around a while will know 2008, where the market really struggled after that big recession and a lot of companies then went bankrupt. So what's happened is a lot of dealers, and it's affecting dealers more who sell new caravans than dealers who sell used caravans. And the reason is this. When a dealer has a franchise with like Bailey, Coachman, Adria, Swift or whoever it will be, they have to buy in a certain minimum number of caravans. So even if they're a smallish dealer, they might be asked by Bailey or whoever to buy 20, 30 caravans. Now when they buy those 30 caravans, they don't instantly pay the full whack for them. So they might buy, I don't know, I'm, I'm just making some numbers up here, but let's say the caravan's 30 grand, they might have to pay 25 grand to buy that caravan and they make a profit, or not a profit, but they make money of 5,000 pound. And they don't really make 5,000 pound due to tax and other things and in you know, a warmly work, but that's the kind of the idea that they're working on. So they'll buy that, but when they get that from the manufacturers, they get that on like a credit line through like Lloyd's or something like that. So Lloyd's actually give them the money to buy that through the manufacturers and they get a demo van. Now that demo van normally has interest-free credit for 365 days or a year until they have to start paying interest on that. And just a quick note, this video is not particularly sponsored, but you may know that I have another company after I left teaching, which is smashyourexams.com. We offer tutoring for a large range of subjects or so computer science, we've got maths, we've got English, biology, chemistry, economics, French, and Spanish. So if you've got a son or daughter who wants tutoring, and I can guarantee by reading our Trustpilot reviews, we do an absolutely superb job remotely, then we can work with you. If you've got a school and you teach computer science and you want some consultancy on getting computer science right, or even the fact the government's changed you getting into IT, we can also help with that. So if you go to our website, smashyourexams.com, forward slash tutor if that's what you're interested in. If you want help with computer science and teaching it, forward slash consultancy, we can help you out. And like I said, I'm happy to send Trustpilot reviews, or you can also find us on Facebook. Uh, and we also have a YouTube channel, but that's only in its first stages. But this video is sponsored by my company, which is smashyourexams.com, and we can help your son or daughter get the very best grade so they can move on to the next steps of what they want to do with their career. The same kind of thing actually happens in the car industry, it's slightly different. If they're buying caravans which are used, they often have 30 days until they have to start paying interest on that. Now what often happens in the caravan trade is that soon, and it's 2024 now, the 2025 vans will be coming from the manufacturers in about August time. 
So what happens is normally dealers, when they've had their 30 caravans as an example, might have sold the vast majority of those at this point. They might have sold like 25, 26. So the four they've got left, they might have to fairly heavily discount them to get rid of them off their credit line because they can't buy new caravans on that credit line until they've got the bank's got their money back. So the caravan dealers have got a couple of options. They can drop the price and hopefully make a slight profit or maybe even sell at cost. Some dealers are actually selling vans at cost at the moment, which is an ideal for them, but that's the way they have to do things. Or they use their savings, which have saved up over time, to basically buy that in its entirety and then try and sell on. Now, what's happening at the moment is that caravan dealers are soon to get 2025 caravans, but a lot of them have not sold their 2024 caravans. And it's not just that they haven't sold three or four of them, sometimes they've got pretty much the whole set of stock of them, they can't sell them on. Then some dealers have 2023 caravans, which are brand new, but haven't been picked up. And some even have 2022 caravans, they still can't sell. And it's now 2025 models coming out. So they have to try to discount those caravans in order to get their money back. And as you probably see at the moment, there are some ridiculous sales of caravans going on in the market because caravan dealers can't sell them. The reason that caravan dealers can't sell them is caravan prices over the past few years have gone, in my opinion, absolutely mental and are far, far too expensive for what they are. On top of that, people are paying, you know, 30, 40, 50,000 pounds for a caravan and it's still having major issues like leaks, damp and things not working. I mean, imagine if you bought a car and it started leaking. You just wouldn't really happen. It'd be very rare for that to happen. But that does happen quite often in the caravan market. So people aren't happy with the quality. You've got to think about the fact that over the past, you know, 10, 15 years, a lot of people have had either very poor peer rises or pretty much no peer rises. You know that I used to be a teacher. So for years, we got no peer rise or, you know, two, three percent. Um, and then the problem is that at the same time, the market was continuing to go up and up and up. So we were having to pay more for shopping. People's mortgages are going through the roof still, or have been. Uh, interest rates are not coming down. Uh, even the August one, apparently they're not going to bring the rates down. So, you know, your, your loan, which used to be, what, 2 and a half, 3% is now 6%. Your mortgage, which used to be like 2%, is now 4 5%. So people are having to spend a lot more money on other things just to kind of keep up at all just kind of buying things. Um, so because of all of that, people are selling their caravans. But wait a minute, people haven't got money. So who's going to buy the caravans? Well, they're not buying the caravans. So dealers are getting loads of offers to buy used caravans. And they're getting phone calls left, right and centre from people saying, I bought my caravan, you know, I bought, I paid 25 grand for it. And the dealers are saying, well, we don't really need it. We don't want it. And the workings of supply and demand and economics means that the dealers are saying, right, we'll either not have it at all, or we'll buy it off you for literally bottom money. We'll give you 15, 14 grand for it. And that's you put like, well, we can't take a 10,000 pound loss, but that's effectively what's happening to some of those people. And it's a real, real issue, not just for that, but in the general economy that, you know, in 2008, one of the reasons that that happened was people were buying houses who didn't have the money. They were defaulting on them and the banks were having to buy them back and sell them at a loss, which meant you had a spiral of debt increasing, which eventually brought down the banking uh, sector. Now that may happen, and I've said that before, I think that may happen still in the car world. Caravans and motorhomes, although they do have a, a reasonable sized market, aren't really enough to take down banks. But if that happens in the car industry as well, that will cause quite a bit of collateral damage on banks who unfortunately haven't got lots of spare cash because they're still uh, struggling after the 2008 crisis. Some banks are getting better, but still, you know, mortgages, they have, they're now having to borrow money for a lot more money than certainly they agreed to lend on the first place. So, yeah, dealers are basically trying to get rid of caravans, but people don't want them. Now, what that means is if they've got a half a million pound credit line, you know, they get to the point where that's now accruing interest. You know, half a million pound on, you know, I don't know what the interest rates they're paying are, but, you know, five, six percent is a bloody hell a lot of money that they're having to fork out every month and they're not selling things. So they don't have any money coming in to keep their business going in terms of cash flow. Hence why some of these dealers are going bust. Um, you know, at the moment, you can go and pick up a caravan. I'm not saying even a very good value, in my opinion, even a discount, but I've taken four or five thousand pound off them. You know, pre 
COVID, you might have seen dealers take a thousand pound off and they might have chucked in a motor mover, but you wouldn't see discounts of 5,000 pound. Now this is also starting to happen on the motorhome trade. You know, again, I, you know, I'm a family man, I've got three children, lovely house and stuff like that. I can't afford to go and spend 70, 80,000 pound on a new motorhome. I can't afford to go and spend 40,000 pound on a caravan when I've got to get a car. It's just not gonna happen. So the market is collapsing quite rapidly. So if you have a caravan, you probably can't sell it very easily unless you're gonna take a massive loss on that caravan, particularly if you've bought in the last few years. So I suppose it's up to you whether you hold it or whether you say, you know, a bird in the hand is better than two in the bush, which is kind of what I did last year. We, we bought our caravan for £15,000 and we sold it for like nearly 14 to a dealer. And I was a bit annoyed about losing that money. However, the money was better in my bank account than just sitting there depreciating, you know, not doing much. So the dealers are really, really struggling. And there's a couple of solutions that could be the case the manufacturers could obviously reduce their capacity about what they're selling, but they've got bills to pay, so they want to try and sell caravans. But they're gonna have a problem that when these dealers go bust, like happened to Broadlane, and a couple of us are pretty much there and nearly there as well, the administrators, who are effectively uh, normally kind of a lot of that money's from the bank, the bank wants their money back. The bank will just be saying, look, I don't care about your profit. I just want my money back. If you look at like houses that go uh, for recessions, a lot of the time they don't care about you and your money. You know, you might have bought that house for two hundred thousand pound. If you've got a hundred thousand pound on the mortgage, all the bank wants is that hundred thousand pound, so they massively discount them. So you're going to have all these caravans, like Baileys, Swifts, Adrias, all them. They're going to go back to the manufacturers, and what does the manufacturer do with all these caravans? They've got caravans which are effectively out of date because in the world of caravans, you have 20, 24, 20, 25, which doesn't happen really in the car trade. In the car trade, they might manufacture them, they might be sat in a field, or they might be sat you know, in a car park somewhere, and that car, because it's a model base rather than a year base, can sit there for even two years, and then after that, it gets its registration, and it's still you know, a 2024 20, plate, even though the car might have been built two years ago, you swap the tires, it's still a brand new car. It still hasn't had many issues compared to like a lot of caravans which get damp because they haven't been sealed properly. So, you know, there's a lot of issues going on in the market there. And there is a couple of other elephants in the room. Like I said, you go and buy a caravan on finance or a motorhome of finance, 10% interest is a good deal in quotation marks there. 10%. So if you go and borrow £50,000, you're effectively having to spend well over £5,000 a year of interest. Compound interest is the, the one of the kind of greatest wonders in the world. If you've got money, if you've not got money and the banks love it, it makes them an absolute fortune. The amount of debt that people have, they love people having debt. So you've got the new side, which is really struggling. People can't sell them. But then on the used side, that's the same kind of issue. People can't sell their caravans. And we even looked, you know, you know for a fact that I got their caravan, I think last March, and we sold it, as I said, in a slight loss, but the money's been in the bank and then plenty of interest, so it's kind of more or less um, got rid of that loss. But I looked, I went, oh, there was someone down the road uh, from where I'm in Sunderland selling a Swift Challenger SE uh, 2019, and it was sell it for 16 grand with all the kind of bits and pieces. Now, oh, that, that's a pretty good deal. And then I went and looked at the campsite pictures and the fees and went, you know, caravan site that used to be £20 for, and now charging 40,000, 40, £40 pound a night, I might as well charge 40,000. And I'm thinking, so you want me to come on this pitch and pay £40 pound a night, so £80 pound for two nights, plus fuel, so maybe 150 quid for two nights away. Comparatively, you know, maybe I can't, but if you've got, uh, if you've only got two kids, you can get a nice hotel room, um, and they'll do your bedding for you and all that, and you can pay less money. You know, it's not really worth it, in my opinion. So the market is massively struggling, not so much on the new side, although that is still struggling, it's the new side which is killing caravan dealers. Lots more caravan dealers are going bust. That is for sure that's coming this year. That's not an if, that's just a when. Whether it happens now, or whether it happens over the winter, when they've got no sales at all, because that's kind of what the market does generally, we don't know. Uh, and I know for a fact that some used dealers are now going to the uh, people that have got new caravans are just offering them literally 
you know, cost or minus cost price. They've actually sell them at a loss to other dealers just to get them off their credit balance. And it was really interesting to see a video by Atlantic Caravans, um, and I'll put a link down below, where they were talking about the fact they're not selling new caravans this year because they just can't sell them. So the other thing, you know, I mean, it's a local deal. It was great, great set of people, and they've set up, like, in COVID, and they've now got loads of, like, things like Joe Camp and all these other companies, and they'll be getting loads of vans. They can't sell them. They've been there for a year. They can't sell them. They've took five grand off. They're still not selling. Um, and as I said, you know, in the family market particularly, you're going to struggle to get many families to go and lash out 60, 70,000 pounds. 70, you know, 70,000 pounds, if you're good, you know, get 5% interest on that, you can probably get better than that, but let's just say 5% interest a year, 10% you know, of that 7,000, 3,500 pounds a year, you can get back per year by putting that money in the bank. Where if you buy that motorhome, you'll have to pay the bank, you know, 3,500 pounds a year, and you'll have to pay that money out every month that you couldn't invest instead. It just doesn't make financial sense for a lot of people. So we'll see where this goes. Um, like I said, I know at least one of a fairly big popular dealer is going bust soon. Uh, they're running out of money. Um, and there's another couple of dealers that are close to that. I don't know if they'll get away with it this year, whether that will take them under. Um, a lot of them obviously got, took on debt during COVID, took on COVID loans that they probably shouldn't have to try and keep things going. And I know at least a couple of other dealers that are fairly local to me who have started laying off staff, knowing that they're probably going to struggle to survive the rest of the season. So just a, a warning, you know, be careful out there. Really consider what you're doing. And if you want to buy a new caravan, you need to find a dealer which, you know, if they're often like five, six grand off, they're probably struggling. That's why they're probably often the five, six grand off. It probably is too good to be true. And the other thing I would say to a lot of people in advice is, you know, if you're like up in the northeast, don't go and buy a caravan for somewhere down in Cornwall because it's a back to base warranty. You, it's not worth the money, you know, unless if you're getting five grand off, fair enough. But if you're getting a grand, two grand off, by the time you keep going back to it, and most caravans have to go for warranty work of one way or another, which, again, is a bit ridiculous, but they have to. You don't want to be traipsing your caravan down the other side of the country because dealers are not like car dealers. It's not like Ford where you just take your Ford back there and then it'll fix it. You've got to take it back to the original dealer. So it might be worth paying that little bit more to work with your local dealer than it is to work with a dealer on the other side of the country um, because you've got to take the caravan back. But be really careful, people out there. You know, my advice, which sounds harsh, and I know I've done things in the industry and industry probably won't like me say this, I wouldn't buy a caravan anymore. I think you're, you're mad if you do. I think just wait. The market will continue to go down. Um, and I, you know, when all these other caravans go back to some of these manufacturers, some of them will be struggling. Eldus laid off a lot of people. I think if Eldus wasn't owned by Hymer, uh, it was a big company, that might have gone as well because they're having a few quality issues I've heard from a lot of people about them. So look after yourselves out there. Hopefully that's been a useful video for you and we'll see what the market goes. But I'm not buying a caravan and what I'm at home anytime soon because the market's still struggling. Motorhomes not as bad as caravans to be fair, but new motorhomes are starting to struggle as well because they want 70, 80 grand. People haven't got that kind of money and that's what they take mega debt, which I would advise you not to do.